Hi, hello, namaskar. This is your host and welcome to One Story at a Time. In this podcast, we have Mr. Anuj Srivatsava, who is who has an abundance of experience in technology and finance and he is the founder of onfinance.in which is India's first super app for financial literature and investments. Hello Anuj, welcome to the show. Hey Saran, how are you? Good, I'm good Anuj, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Thank you, thank you Anuj. So let's rewind a few years back. So you are a bits alum, right? And what you're trying to build right now is completely finance. So how did that transition happen from tech to finance? Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically uh, during my childhood days as well, uh, my dad used to trade a lot. So I used to go to a lot of brokerage houses, look at terminal screens with him because that in that in that uh, in that time the yeah. entire, you know, buying buying and selling of stocks and all that was like through uh, a broker so i have been like interested in finance you can say before going into college and then in the first okay. year of my college i was a part of this a wall street club that we have a finance related club where mm. i learned a lot of you know like uh, finance jargons and finance processes like what does that actually mean and i got really interested in it and in my sophomore second year actually i was uh, recruited as a part time uh, quantitative researcher by world quant mm. a lot of uh, folks from bits actually from bits co were recruited by the same firm so yeah uh, so there actually i think i think world quant you could say could be like my pressing area where mm. i actually entered into the fintech space you know ki exploring right. you know, like quant investing what actually is it what is like algorithmic trading and how how is it like scalable to all these high investors and how is it really helpful to manage the portfolios to mitigate the risk they have like everything out there so like yeah you can say uh, that mm. was my entering stage and then uh, a very unique uh, feature of bits is that they also offer a minor degree you know So actually, my okay. major degree was in chemical engineering, which was okay. my bachelor's in engineering. But uh, mm. my minor degree was in finance and economics. Acha. So mm. I was like, so. I need to focus more on the finance, <laughs> on the minor degree side <laughs> than my major mm. degree. <laughs> yeah. So they were both extremes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I know. Uh, all right. There, mm. I, I just, I when uh, I studied the subjects out there in the minor degree, I was mm. like open to like uh, sitting in for all the internships processes for all the huge investment banks that came out there. So in my okay. fourth year, I uh, then joined Credit Suisse uh, in, the, mm. in the marketing department where I was, you know, like looking at the entire PAUs and the processing well a bit. for the mm. high end, uh, portfolio guys or investors out there so it actually gave me you know you can say uh, in house experience of what actually happens behind the scenes obviously the right. work was not very interesting at an analyst level but yeah that right. was actually my entering point uh, uh, full time after my college and then mm. i was like hey, i need to do something you know because i have like worked in a lot of banks then i joined barclays uh, then i mm. also worked at think at goldman sachs and then some of the hedge funds as well iafl as well in equity research so i actually changed jobs a lot because i was just trying to figure out uh, you know ki how actually all these banks and big institutional investors are doing on their scale and if i mm. can replicate that uh, same level in a simple and efficient manner to a retail investors and common people like us right afraid of investing correct who don't invest because of the market sentiments out there mm. so yeah that was my aim and i was like hey, i need to have this sort of sophisticated tech that these banks have uh, for their high end clients uh, mm. for the for the for the real people that they need that that need like retail investors and on people gen z millennials everyone so it's just like uh, our platform is basically we are trying to you can say uh, build uh, a, a super app where you can uh, track your investments where you can invest mm. on the on the ai driven investment invites that we provide you 
where you can engage in a social community as well and look at the analysis of it and where we have right now offering around uh, 1000 plus uh, indian stocks and 2 and 300 plus okay. cryptocurrencies that's like the highest coverage in india as of now so yeah uh, so we actually launched like uh, two months back only and uh, like the traction we are getting it's like pretty uh, pretty great and the yeah. they use as well yeah right now we are a community we have around uh, like the users on our app are around uh, like 6000 plus as of now very nice plus. wonderful wonderful and how did you come up with this uh, idea i mean uh, not the idea but how did you find out okay i have there is a problem and i am going to solve this problem what was the eureka moment yeah yeah so for that i would say uh, actually i also do a lot of investing like thanks to my dad so mm. then when i got into college i started earning in my second year and i started putting some of that into stocks and, mm. and i for a while also started doing options trading which i actually got <laughs> in <laughs> and actually it's pretty addicting you know if, if yeah getting or gaining big if you're losing you're losing big as well so yeah. i just uh, i just keep on like uh, investing my money in the options for let's say around 2 to 3 mm. years still i have some okay money. i was like uh, where where should i actually go should i go to money control to look to to like uh, have some insight on whatever stock mm. or crypto i want to buy do i do i uh, switch on my tv and go to cnbc tv 18 then should i go to telegram channel should i go to a whatsapp channel or should i listen to an influencer on youtube suggesting buy bitcoin or buy <laughs> like mm. so it's like the There, there's a lot of you know like financial information wanted out there, but it's just Correct. out there. It's like scattered. Mm. It's like pretty distorted. So I was like, True. why can't I make an app? You know, like a super app where I will just combine all of it, not uh, aggregate it, and then have an insights and analytics layer on top of it, which is actionable. Like this mm. is the news. These are the insights. Look at the insights. Invest. This is the fundamental data. These are the insights. Look at the insights. Invest. So it's like you can validate as well. Like let's say if you are, if you if if you are looking, if you are like uh, do if you do your uh, research or if you invest in stocks based on fundamental analysis, you can hop on our app. You will see that you can also validate it by looking at the insights we provide on the news of that particular stock or crypto, or let's say uh, the. Uh, the social media discussions on the platform. What is what are the peers doing? You can look at the technicals. Mm. Like there is a lot of stuff that you can see, and then have you know some sort of you can say a fearless decision because right now in investing fear is at the top, right? Correct. You know? Yeah, well, I uh, agree. Yeah. So that was how you started. You kind of experienced the problem and you wanted to solve it. Yeah. Yeah. So I I also have another follow up question. uh kisi i i have also been investing from almost 5 years now and yeah. i've been actively trading in the indian markets as well but sometimes yeah. i observe that uh, even before the news is out the price is factored in so is yeah. there any way that you guys are trying to overcome this particular problem yeah yeah so definitely we are uh, we are doing that actually so what we are trying to do you know we when we we release insights on a on a let's say news article on a content aggregator as in whole so what mm. we do is we have some sort of uh, if it's let's say a long term impact news or if it's a middle term impact news like short term impact news like a intraday impact news because mm. if it's a technical news it's high chance that after let's say 5 to 10 minutes or let's say maximum 20 25 correct. minutes of price movement impact that would be already factored in right? correct so correct it just depends on the bucketing that you do right mm. for your uh, whatever the risk appetite of a user is but right now as in general uh this bucketing we are uh, using that to see if it's already been factored in and what actually is the market movement of that particular stock crypto once that news hit the market that mm. is important to track makes sense makes sense right so uh, tell us more about how you acquired your early users because you told me that uh, you have like 6000 users already and when did you start this when did you start on finance yeah so i started it around 4 months back uh where Whoa. i yeah yeah i don't for five months back where i quit my job uh, it was in investment banking in barclays i quit that and i started on it full time and since mm. then i actually found my uh, co-founder 
who's the CTO as well. He's also from Bits. Uh, so we found, right. we sing, then we started working on it. And I did mm. some, you know, like cohort analysis for our alpha app because our mm. alpha app UI UX was like pretty basic. Mm. Like, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I just used that actually to, uh, to prove our POC. What POC is, mm. POC is proof yeah. of concept. Proof because of concept. you don't want to, you know, make a product and push it to the market, uh, not knowing if there's actually need of that product. Because right exactly. now there are a lot of yeah right now there are a lot of startups who are I mean inventing problems and then showcasing themselves as solutions of them right so it Correct. should be a genuine solution you should have some sort of cohort analysis in some sort of backup in terms of data you know to back that up so these Correct. are like some of the things that I followed when I developed my mm. project and when I was like yeah I have like did that ask, ask more than 500 plus people and they think mm. that is the right way to go. Then I started building on the beta app, uh, searched on the features from my experiences, got some freelancers as well to come in. So yeah, uh, after we shipped our product in August, uh, mm. I particularly uh, like did, uh, you know, like the go-to-market strategy. I, I didn't know be- before that what actually is this GTM? Yeah. So I googled mm. it. Was like, okay, this is go to market and go to market channels are these. Okay, I have to do mm. that. So like, it's like uh, whenever I mean I have experience in myself in the tenure, I have I mean I have mm. been running this startup. You know, it's like we, you can't do all that practical stuff here. I mean, all that theoretical stuff here in a practical Correct. manner. Like, uh, mm. so what our channels are mostly, so on the very first day we announced, uh, you know, we, 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 uh, collaborated with a lot of LinkedIn influencers. So mm. they, 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 we give them a app and we were like, if, if you like the UI UX of our app and we did some AB testing on it, you can, uh, you know, help us in launching yeah. our app so that whenever the, this product is in the market, it, it, it will get pushed and will get mileage and people will come in. So Correct. that was a very first, you can say, strategy that mm-hmm. I put in. So on the very first day, I think we clocked around 300 plus downloads because of that. Very nice. So that was like, it's, it's, it's good. And after that, I mean, because once one things, you know, when things goes a little bit viral, I won't say it went really viral, but mm. a little bit viral. So it's, 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 there's something known as word of mouth, right? Which comes in. So word of mouth, you can say it's the highest stage of growth. If your app is just growing by that means you have, Correct. you are like achieving, you are on this early science of PMF mm. or have achieved PMF, which is product market fit. So what I did was I also partnered with colleges as well. Right. Achha. I organized mm. their product case studies. I organized their UI UX case studies so that they get acquainted to our app. Did And they also did okay. the research for me. Uh, Based mm. on the app that we give them, so that we also did the AB testing there as well, you know. Okay. So I would say in, in these uh, six thousand plus users, it's like mostly it's been you know the word of mouth bit, but the mm. couple of colleges that we uh, that we collab- collaborated with, the outreach that we did, and the initial LinkedIn launch. So these two were the factors that actually pushed it to the edge. That's that's why right now so we are far. having we are witnessing a long linear growth in terms of users. Mm. Also really. Uh, good engagement metrics. So Bob, I think the LinkedIn move was a very smart move because these days you see it's everybody is stuck to their phones, you know, like looking yeah. at LinkedIn or Instagram. So that was a very smart move. And uh, actually, you know, we have also collaborated with a few colleges, you know, nice. that is how we market our product as well. But anyway, that was, that was nice knowing how you acquired your early users. Yeah. Now. See, uh, in this entire journey, there must have been ups and downs. I'm sure any entrepreneur will go through ups and downs. So tell us more about your downs because uh, in just four months, you've achieved something very significant, right? A lot of apps rarely do it. So when you've done that, you must have hustled a lot and there must have been a lot of downtime. So tell us more about your downtimes and how you overcame those downtimes. Yeah, so you're, uh, you're right about that. There are definitely some, I would say a lot of downturns, but the yeah. intensity of them differ, right? So yeah, uh, I actually, uh, I, I had a re- really difficult time, you know, picking my co-founder actually, because I'm from a non-tech product finance related background and I'm looking to create a sophisticated tech, uh, you know, like I can give my expertise 
ai and data science but i am not really you know a front end or a full stack developer mm. there i actually faced a lot of issues after switching to co-founders or you can say uh, doing some play i mean playfulness on the project that i was working which is which was yeah. uh, this was the one that struck with me uh, mm. you, because uh because you know his his and my vision actually aligned with the company and the motivational factor that we have right the belief mm-hmm. in a problem so i would say that is very very important you know if who who you who you choose to partner with in terms of the founding team because they will be in the long run with you always right and Correct. obviously in the short run which actually yep. leads to making of a company yeah so mm-hmm. i would say that was a downturn when i was like hey, it's six months has been gone and i was still actually doing my full time as well and working part time on okay. this project mm. so exploring options in terms of a co-founder so when i found him i was like you know we need to quit immediately and start working on this and let's deliver this to the market as soon as possible so that was uh, the downturn and right now i would say ki in terms of uh, sometimes uh, it happens ki let's say today you have around 500 daily active users on our app the next day it could drop to 200 right So there's sort of anti euphoria you can say sort of mm. that thing you have in terms of you you get, I mean I mean you can't really uh, judge you know yourself or your company based on let's let's say days that's why uh, we have this cohort analysis where you can you know like pick those cohorts where you have growth and mm. so like sort of non linear graph So yeah, uh, that was I would say sometimes that also dejected me, you know, when uh, daily activity mm. is dropped. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. uh, other than that, I would say downs are obviously there if you are trying to fundraise in this beer market. Mm. Right? Yeah. But but right now there's 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 a lot of money also, you know, like lot of dry power in the VC. So if okay. you are just able to you know story tell. because i have seen exactly. if your product is also good let's say you're making some sort of revenue but sometimes they reject you based on e this is very generic or some like too early for us some sort of that bs but what Correct. happens is if 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 you if you know uh, like try to build like a story around it ki i i am here so i am here for this company for the next decade at least matlab mm. so, i am here for 10 saal ke liye to main aaya hu to i will build something right and you just have to make sure that they also get that in the in the 20 to 30 or 40 minutes pitch that you have them. correct so, correct so yeah bas abhi tak to yahi dekhe down matlab jo bhi down turns the let's see aage kya hota hai very well very well said and uh, even i believe in this you know a lot of people are saying that uh, you know there is this uh, investment winter coming and all those things but i believe any good product will attract investments Mm-hmm. which investor does not want to invest in a great product right exactly. and and also firstly you validated my product because you said you 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 know it was very difficult for you to find a co-founder and yeah. literally that's what we are trying to do on our product <laughs> yeah that's really tough not to grab but once you grab yep. it everything is mm. all right so tell us more about uh, the services and features that your app has how can and and i and i know that you guys are focusing on gen z and millennials if i'm yeah. not wrong so how are your features or services helping them so tell us more about the features yeah yeah sure so uh, as i told you what we are trying to build is uh, like a super app you know like a one stop solution where mm. a person who does not know investing can come as well because we are offering financial literacy or okay. where a person who knows a little bit of investing or is deep into investing can come as well because mm. we are offering investment insights as well so we categorize okay. the users into primarily three uh, you can say buckets one is uh, like a learner who is learning mm. to invest second is passive investor who invests let's say 0.1 to 5% of the portfolio who is very conservative mm. and the third is like the active investor who invests more than 10% of the i mean of the portfolio a little bit aggressive right. being conservative so yeah so so we so you know like pocketing of a users is very very important i think correct so that is helping us to actually visualize and realize what features this sort of bucket need this sort of bucket need this sort of bucket because mm. is, we are building super app and we are catering to every we have personas all over these three you know peeps yeah. so we have to be sure 
that uh, we have features that satisfy all of them right so right now what Correct. we have uh, like whenever i say financial content i mean anything related to news articles blogs fundamental data market price data results announcements analyst ratings social media discussions peer to peer discussions you know everything related to that but there is this is there in the market this is available in google a lot of apps are aggregating it but no one is you know uh, working to give a sort of actionable insights of, mm. of this. So what we are doing is we are we have all the news aggregated on a platform but we deliver that in a we we also we perform a layer of you can say analytics and insights on that aggregated news and we deliver that in a manner to provide investments insights based investing you know so mm. we are in the aim to to help people to invest based on the insights of all the financial content that is available in the market so right now forty is that so if 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 you are let's say just investing uh, really less like one thousand two thousand because Gen Zs obviously they don't have much capital max Correct. to max is TK hundred hundred K right but Correct. they know the power of discounting because they are mm. sorry the power of compounding because they are young they know that if I invest five thousand in this if let's say the stock raises to uh, around two hundred three hundred K in the next one week in the next let's say decade. Then that five thousand will be like around, you know. Correct. So yeah, so it's like all about you know understanding. Uh, like we understood what actually a users need. So very one very important thing that I want to talk about about our app is like why we call ourselves a super app, right? Because there mm. are a lot of financial apps in the market. Zerodha, there is you can say uh, Finshots is there, right? And This money control is there. Lot of ET money is there, but they don't call them a super app. We are calling them the ourselves a super app because right now we have stocks and cryptocurrencies. In our future, okay. we are planning to onboard more instruments, SIPs, mutual funds, DeFi protocols, US stocks, real mm. estate. So let's say if you have an account, uh, you have a DMAT account for stocks uh, on Zerodha, right? Mm. And you have let's say a crypto account on Vazirx and Coin Switch mm. Google, and you have another DMAT account. Let's say an upstart, mm. right? So you have four okay. different accounts, four instruments, and all of them. So you don't need to use their apps anymore, right? Those four, you don't need to use okay. the you need to use the interest. Go on our platform. You import your portfolio from, let's say, Zerodha and Upstart. You import a crypto portfolio from Vazirx and Coinsys Cuber, and we will curate everything for you. We'll curate okay. the feed. We'll give you the the smart money alerts and notifications. We'll give you learning resources in terms of podcasts, webinars, one-on-one sessions with, let's say, traders and some of the high-end high bulls. So we have all of that. We personalize according to you, and then we also offer you the investment insights on top of that. So you will mm-hmm. be like, this is a portfolio. We recommend. We don't recommend, but this is something that you can explore as well. You know, you can okay. learn about it and you can invest from that opportunity. And if let's say their trade is going into negative, we at most we immediately suggest them to how to you know uh, like mm, navigate manage the risk. And, yeah, hedge that. So so this is one of the important USPs of our app as well. Like mm. after you the portfolio, you have actually lots of added advantage on that, right? Because Zerodha or you can say Coinsys Cuber, they provide analysis and insights, but like the basic ones, technical fundamental, which is available everywhere. So yeah, that is a core USP, one of our one of our core USPs. So is this paid or is is it a freemium version? The actionable yeah, insights. So right you're now actually about. it's free for all the users. Mm-hmm. You know, but we are working on something known as on finance premium, which will be okay. like on finance 2.0, where a user can come in only if he's a premium or paid user for us, because there we will be mm-hmm. having more uh, uh, instruments. There, there we will be having more. Uh, suggestions as in not recommendation suggestions in terms of uh, like investment products as well you know like acha okay yeah so that understood is, understood pretty interesting and i love the way that you provide actionable insights because as you said there are a lot of con- there is a lot of content out there there is a lot of analysis out there but people literally do not know if they have to buy or sell based on that particular content so exactly. providing actionable actionable insights is a very interesting thing and i would definitely use it and one more thing is the way you said you know you can import your portfolios and you provide insights on that portfolio right yeah. because i yeah. know a few platforms doing this but they are paid 
and they demand a lot of money for this so mm-hmm. yeah so if you are able to you know provide this service at a very low cost or even probably at free cost and, and i think and those yeah. also those apps are also mostly like focused on one or two instruments we are trying exactly. to uh, cover a spectrum of those but really sticking to mm-hmm. you know providing literacy ke people one there was once there was fds which was at 10% yeah. right now it's less than 5% so now you can move to Correct. sip mutual funds now most <laughs> of them <are laughs> move move to sip mutual funds and i have talked to a lot of you know like these users and a lot of folks out there as well uh like some of them have invested in sips and when i mm. tell them i have invested in some of the stocks they are like you are doing a risky investments so i was like uh-huh. yeah, in sip mm. which is sip is i invested <laughs> like, what would be the name so the guarantee will know ki the stocks are the underlying of them <laughs> so it's like you know, so that time i figured ki there is definitely okay. a, a mm. bridge there that can be you know that can be exploited correct and that can be you can leverage in a manner that people get educated about this right Correct. Because if 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 he know if he has invested in SIP, obviously his risk is adverse to invest in a stock as well of that Correct. fundamentals. So yeah, of course, that, that is some of the. So I, mean, I mean, actually talking to users really help a lot. You know, I yeah. usually I usually make time for my users for around let's say uh, uh, definitely an hour or a couple of hours per day. Hmm. So really important. Very nice. Because initially you are an at early stage, right? what initially i was doing i was like i like this feature i want to ship it hmm. that you can't do you should correct definitely ask your community definitely ask your users ki aap log use bhi karoge ki nahi ya fir redundant ban jayega kyunki features lane ke to bahut sare features hai yaar lane ke correct validation is really important and i was reading this somewhere the real validation comes from a real user it does not come from an investor it does not come from a founder it does not come from a team so yeah quite good and uh, first of all uh, i really love the product because i used it just yesterday i was going through the entire app just love it love it man congratulations and good luck <laughs> so now let's talk more investment and finance okay yeah. so first of all would you tell me what quant trading really is and how it is different from the normal retail trading you know how people retailers do how is it different Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, initially I used to work in quant a lot. You know, like algorithm mm. trading and all that. Uh, you can say the non-conventional stuff. But then I, yeah. I moved to the investment banking side of things, risk management as well. So so it's all like you can say. You know, I used to do this in around like three four years back. But I would okay. say quant investing has been really on the uptrend. For the past two three mm. years, since since small case has completely captured that, correct. It's really excelling at it. You know, like the themes they have, like the users they are acquiring. So I would say the difference between quant finance, sorry, quant uh, investing, and value investing is that in value investing, that's a little bit more theoretical. That mm. is actually believing that the that they, there's something known as market efficient hypothesis that is existing that is there already. so they believe that and then they trade according to it uh, like what warren buffett used to do what these correct uh, big high net individuals do on a basis so value investing is nothing in a in a short in a very short summary it's like you know just looking at what are the what are the growth and value stocks are relating mm-hmm. to their fundamental metrics or looking at the company reports and the revenue figures and doing a dcf analysis and that sort of analysis to Correct. approach it like like an intrinsic value so that yeah. the end end game is basically to figure out if that stock or crypto is actually undervalued or overvalued if it's mm. overvalued then you can short if it's undervalued you can buy a lot so mm. but in quant investing in quant investing because you know it's like automated and like i have also mm-hmm. used uh, like uh, some time series models such as lstms and all that neural nets you know because in, in high frequency trading or in quant mm. quant trading you can you can leverage something known as uh, arbitrage opportunities a lot you know 
that arbitrage right. opportunity like like for example very simple let's say apple stock in the in nyse exchange is trading at 100 100 mm. uh, but that same stock in the london exchange is trading as 100.25 dollars correct right so you have a levia arbitrage opportunity there so that correct. you can leverage you can you can play with a lot of parameters in terms of you can say metrics related to technical data fundamental data right you can build some sort of signals and back test it for the last let's say since uh, the last financial crisis from 2007 2022 i would see if i am having mm. a decent curve you know a decent risk return profile a decent sharp ratio that that usually uh, we call the risk adjusted returns of a particular portfolio mm. that are doing quantum investing so if you, if if you do this back testing right you can bucket some some stocks some value stocks into one let's say and call that a value bucket in a value bucket stock or you can mm. bucket let's say stocks who are performing well in the esg sector and sell them as a key this is a esg stock bucket which you can mm. buy with the returns these with the risk So it's like automatic, automated investing on, let's say, the past ten to fifteen years of data, back testing mm-hmm. on that data and generating signals, which, which in terns have a good risk return profile for the, for the, I mean. The Understood. Risk. So, so basically, But, what you're trying to say is, quant trading works more on mathematical models and back tested data rather yeah. than just seeking value through, you know, P ratios or. understanding the business etc super yeah okay so now uh, and you've had uh, abundant experience in the field of finance and investment and you've been an investor yourself right so now uh, can you tell me how should people start investing and why should they start investing because the why is really important that is true that is true so so right now you know what i have seen the common trend in the market uh, that people are they want to invest right but the ones that have money they want to invest but the intent is not there right mm. and the ones who don't have money they also you know uh, they want to learn but they are like i mean something uh, good or in terms of you know like learning or whatever is not really out there so i would say ki matlab intent kis koi logo mein intent hota hai they can pass in aute many people have money but they don't have any intent you know so it's Correct. like it's like ki when the these these profiles are out there and you just have to uh, you know like convince them ki why investing in the big game and why i personally think investing is a big game because i personally you know put a lot of of my savings into stocks and crypto mm. so i think right now because you know if if you have wealth you you don't want it to just sit and don't grow at all right there was Correct. something as fds which is just told you right right now it's less than four it's around 4% in us it's less than 4% right Correct. there is like sips and mutual funds as well where you can invest but you but that is also viable option but but you need you need that money mm. to grow itself right a little bit and why do you actually need that because it's just giving you proper returns over the past 5 6 years without doing anything right you're just investing in one particular stock taking that sort of leap taking that uh, leap of faith you can say or like a risk in terms of if you're doing stocks or crypto or but yeah. it's actually increasing your wealth right but people are afraid as in what if i invest my let's say whole chunk and still and it mm. goes away then i want to invest another chunk to just get back the chunk which i just invested so it's like a loop you know but but the Correct. people need to need to understand that if 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 you lost that money because my first deal actually i traded an option of so hdfc bank so i lost okay. there around 20k in the very first deal right i bought an <laughs> otm option so that was actually very motivational for me you know you bought like, an otm option yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so mm. so what what actually you know was very inspiring for me for that is that i was feeling very motivated i was like never to trade options on your hunch <laughs> you need to do proper research related to that and then only Correct. invest and then, and then, and then 
I mean, learned a lot about options, you know, did some sort of paper trading, read, read mm. Wall Street journals and all of that stuff. I was like, you know, I'm confident enough. And then I started investing. It obviously didn't give that sort of returns I was expecting, but but I had, but I always maintained a green PNL, you know, in options. Right. Is, mm. Yeah, which is very rare. <laughs> so, so, so it was like, you know, you need to educate yourself. And I did that for myself, but I want through one finance, I want to do that, you know, through to all the folks who are right out there and also, you know, to especially to middle India, which are the tier two tier three cities, because they also right. have farms, they also have a lot of heritage properties, they also have a lot of money, some of them, you know, but they don't want Correct. to invest. But they don't want to invest because they're afraid that these high tier one city folks will just consume them. And, you know, it's like mm. they have these preconceived notions. It's because uh, they, are, they are not really trained or educated on that bit, right? So, so uh, it's, it's my aim to penetrate the bitter roots, you know, of India, especially mm. to, to like, democratize all this financial information which is out there and promote that investing is something that you can do irrespective of whatever is going on in your life, right? Related right. To job, related to personal life. Mm. So, yeah. Very nice. So, so basically, I think the one and only reason that people have to invest in stocks or I wouldn't say crypto as of now, at least stocks or mutual funds is to make their money grow. Right. Instead of sitting in the bank and losing value, because a lot of people don't understand inflation also. Again, that's where financially financial literacy comes in. Yep. So you have to make your money grow more money. So that is one of the reasons why I believe. Uh, and, I, and I've seen it. I've seen my money growing and I've been doing it. So, of course, with the right kind of knowledge. So as you said, financial literacy, lit, uh, literacy is really important. And... Uh, there's yeah. like an abbreviation known as DO, DYOR, you know, in investing mm. to your own research. So mm. it's like first do your research, then if you think you can, you can you can go ahead with the investment in any sort of instrument you are in. So we just want to do everything from research, mm. like just uh, put like uh, put a hot platter in, in front of them and just tell mm. them we need to eat it. You know, don't have to do anything. Mm. So, yeah. Right. Okay. So. Okay, so tell us how how should retail investors start investing? So what should be the first uh, instrument? Should it be a stock? Should it be an SIP? Should it be a mutual fund? So how should they go about investing? Yeah, yeah. So, so that is actually a really good question. You know? So many people have actually asked me that. Yeah, I'm new to investing. I have a lot of, I mean, I have uh, accumulated some my wealth and I would just want to invest. God, I'll invest. Hmm. Like he, it actually depends, you know, uh, as a user, as as an investor, as a retail investor, it depends on your risk appetite. Like, mm. how much are you willing to invest in? Ten thousand, one lakh, you know, like one thousand dollars, two thousand doesn't make sense to invest in a mutual fund or SIP. You won't get that sort of returns anyway. Correct. And it also depends if you are a conservative or an aggressive, you know, uh, aggressive retail investor. Because uh, some people are like, yeah, I just I just want to invest because I want to grow and it just sort of turns into gambling because the thing that this is like sort of short term lived and yeah. I would be able to do x 3x my returns over the next few months but it doesn't work that way at all let's say if you're lucky and you, even if you have like let's say beginner's luck and it goes well for you two to three weeks if you stop doing your research and if you just you know become a speculative investor you will always at the end of lose money because what happens actually in a market is the people who are smarter than you are doing the exact opposite of you, right? And Got you it. are the, you are that guy or girl which are which is giving him or her that part, that sort of money. When you exactly. buy something, a person at the other end has to sell it, then only you can buy it in the market. Correct. Similarly, if you sell something, the person on the other hand is has to buy it. So you have to make Got sure you're always smarter than the than that person who could be on the other end. And with this sophisticated tech and you know like access access to a lot of folks with all these systems and this financial mm. content in a distorted manner, but still they've got access. So they have like very different opinions on it, right? Very differentiated opinions. Like uh, some I have seen, like some of my friends, they just use tips from Telegram and WhatsApp group to buy. 
some of my friends just come on the youtube listen to two three influencers and do exactly what they're trying to say you know like some of the uh, basic pump and dump stuff that is being had yeah so so yeah so i would say ki research is very important it's good that you have uh, you know that sources that are conveying to you what exactly needs to be done but still you need to go out there and explore yourself as well you need to validate mm. through, through and, something yeah and also i believe uh, an investor first should be self aware as you said he has to know how much he is ready to lose so yeah. without knowing how much his risk appetite is or what is emotions are when the market is crashing you know people should never start investing exactly. right exactly hmm. that is that is a, that is actually you know the pace of everything because people yeah. are, i mean people are fearful right now they like correct oh, I'm not investing what is yeah <laughs> i just want to keep my cash <laughs> yeah. but it's like you need to you know for for let's for the country good as well as well you need to invest For, yeah. for yourself for the country for you are because if you are investing you are also contributing to a country's gdp right so Correct. that that influence is helping you so it's like mm. it's like a cycle there's no the, you can say no drawbacks of it except if you lose money <laughs> yeah investing <laughs> 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 is pretty is very bad yeah right so you can uh, do that right through research through insights to information and and i also think a lot of people uh, undermine risk management because not a lot of people know about risk management they only know how to invest but they don't know they don't know what to do when they start losing money so tell us a bit about risk management and why it is very important for any investor yeah definitely because you can you know like risk returns risk is actually is i mean joined with returns right whenever anyone talks about returns it's like how much risk you are taking or if someone is talking about your risk so it will be like how much returns you are gaining or losing mm. so it's like you know uh, because everyone want re- wants returns so they are like let's just focus on that we'll just Correct. put in and we'll just sit back and see <laughs> we'll get some returns in right yeah. but but once that happens you have to be very aware whenever you put in money you have to be aware in terms of let's say going theoretical or just quantifying those metrics you have to be aware ki how much risk actually you are putting in right because let's say if you are buying a stock of 10000 word for let's say for the next 7 days and you are buying a particular stock for, for, of 10000 word for let's say a timeline of 6 months so the person who is buying that stock and who is planning to sell in the next one week is actually uh, pretty that is a risky investment as compared okay. to the one who is spread over time so it's always like you know money and time has always been synced through that and it's, it has it has grown something to be called as you know like how to if if anyone optimizes those two bits money invested and the time timelines uh, he he could you know optimize and play around with the risk metrics of it like i have uh, also you know like myself work with uh, credit suisse in the uh, market risk office the risk management part of it so i was seeing how these uh, big clients you know manage their portfolios they keep on rebalancing their portfolios so rebalancing of portfolio is very mm. important what actually that is right. if you have a portfolio and if you have two stocks in it one mutual fund one cryptocurrency right so you need to rebalance it once it hits like a stop loss or a threshold of what you were expecting of it not to right so rebalancing Correct. of a portfolio is there there is also uh, something known as you know uh, like uh, r- risk smart beta investing where you can hedge hedge these particular instruments with what they are correlated to mm. you know, so that, that is also a pretty i mean you can say involved in the quant investing space as well you know like whenever you say risk management could term, it could be like anything related to just looking at a portfolio giving it a very good bad rating to let's say diving deep deep diving into the intrinsic mm. metric of like what volume of uh, you, you can say bio cell has been happening per millisecond what exactly is the threshold of that particular price movement according to your needs so so yeah it it, acts, it it's very important right if you are if you are a retail investor but you need to invest some time into understanding what exactly exactly is it it is before 
going on and just putting your money on anything and just not evaluating your positions on a daily or a, or a timely basis what you're supposed to say correct my so the first thing is you have to be self aware the second thing is you have to be financially literate and the third yeah. thing is you have to understand that investment is a long term game because a lot of people think you know if i invest in a stock it it is going to give me 2x 3x returns yeah. in a month or so so that exactly that's, because that's that's the reason actually uh, in entered in a there is like hmm. 2x amounts of losses or declines that happens every one advance or profits yeah so the, the, hmm. it's, obviously i mean the people who are gaining money they're smarter than you you just need to be of course literate enough you know you need to be do your research that sort of enough key you are at that point and if you Correct. use our app everything is gone you just look and we we are bridging everything for you you can just look and invest at super i just i just love how you slid in on finance in the discussion <laughs> <laughs> super so we have almost come to the end of the podcast okay so okay so uh, do you uh, want to recommend any books or articles for uh, early investors or retail investors that could really help them yeah yeah so so i actually two years back i read this um, book known as intelligent investor so it's like mm. uh, you can say a very big book you know like lot of lots of pages but it was like if if you're just you know, starting up and if you're just starting up about looking to invest what to invest how to evaluate companies what are metrics look at it's a good form it's a good okay. book and another book i would uh, suggest is a one up on wall street so it's also okay. it's it's written actually by uh, one of the largest mm. hedge fund managers ever existed so these are like two high level books that i would recommend you know Uh, other than that uh, i would say ki youtube is more than enough if you want to really yeah. learn about personal investing you know and some of the mm. and look at what is exactly these products because these products are pretty simple they are not at all complicated because they are also developed by humans only right but they, they are like 40 50 60 years ahead of us but Correct. humans mm. you can understand it once you get the gist of it but right people don't actually have the time you know There's there's a Correct. large majority actually of uh, folks who don't have who don't really have the time to invest in this sort of education gathering, right? They just want everything to be put on a plate and give it to them, which is not wrong, which is not wrong to ex- ex- expect, you know. So Correct. that's why I was like, "Ki nee, we need something, ki which would mm. act like one stop destination of all of it, right? And right. have everything related to like advices, to insights, to what." what your portfolio can or cannot do so yeah uh, that that's that's right. my take on it all right and let's just quickly touch upon crypto okay so i have two questions regarding crypto uh, how okay. do you see crypto as an investment and what do you think is the future of the investment the second okay. thing is how do you expect or how do you want investors to uh manage or stabilize the volatility in the crypto market how do you want them to act hmm. yeah so those two questions make sense right so let me just tell you about actually i have uh, invested a large chunk of my money in cryptocurrencies as well okay uh, so uh, <laughs> i right now have like around 5 6 uh, coins in my portfolio hmm. primarily actually are uh, bitcoin uh, ethereum and ripple so what actually mm. i i think in terms of a cryptocurrency i am like a crypt, crypto maxi you can say i really mm. believe in the potential of what crypto can achieve right because it's basically saying ki nothing is owned by an authority anymore right and we are right. very prone to authority i mean the the correct the stuff yeah of that so it's like ki uh, if something is saying that and i have seen a lot of the use cases that bitcoin and you know like the layer ones and all these layers of uh, coins are having and what is ex- exactly and what are you can say the uh, the improve the advancements of blockchain technology like how it can be leveraged right so mm. i mean people are still in the middle of figuring it out right because it can yeah. be leveraged for, for a lot of bad bad stuff you know like as well but it's still like i think a very viable investment because just look at 
look at like this like bitcoin it's actually it, it's it's value is around i think 21000 dollars or something to the south of it i think so yeah. uh, uh so it's it's actually limited right i mean bitcoin value mm. won't be above that one bitcoin would be always that only so so actually the thing is bitcoin is not actually a cryptocurrency it's a commodity so it's like mm. there is bitcoin and all the cryptocurrencies so you can just anal- analogize that uh, bitcoin to you can say mona lisa and all the other paintings like yeah so, so mm. yeah so it's like commodity and you need to step in and gain some sort of, some sort of it right some part of it before it like explodes and everyone is like it's yeah. like, nothing is left what should i buy like right now also right. in india or anywhere in india probably i mean uh, mostly uh, there uh, they print money you know they print these uh, money when they mine a gold mine right when they mine gold mm. they print accordingly they just don't keep on printing money whenever they want Correct. to print it according to that because gold is a commodity it's limited in india right same with bitcoin so i would say ki mm. the people who are right now getting into you know the bitcoin and crypto space they absolutely doing the right thing and that's that's what i'm trying to you know through our app establish that or sort of certainness establish that sort that sort of you know authenticity because mm. uh, crypto people are very varied about they have very very opinions, they're very very feared it's it's because it's very volatile it's community driven crypto market is a lot of community driven let's say if any if elon musk tweets anything about doge doge mm. will only shift by similarly uh, yeah. you can say when vitalik uh, tweets ethereum moves and everyone is like ki ethereum is decentralized how it's moving by a central figure correct right so so, mm. so it's like there are a lot of anomalies as well right as of now but yeah. these are some of the fears that people are having ki the community wala part that's why in our app we have uh, this provision for cryptocurrencies where we are giving insights on the social on the social discussions that has been happening mm. in the from twitter reddit uh, the threads from reddit or discord whichever uh, whichever tweet or you know thread from there is impacting the price of the cryptocurrency through that community hmm. you know, we are highlighting that as well so that you are okay where ki acha ki itni volatility kyun hai it's because of hmm. this. so that is like i think right. some the, but definitely people should buy crypto right because i think in the in the next decade it would be like uh, like i mean non existence as in, in terms of not much would yeah for the folks who don't own them right now correct so, correct so yeah, that's why i want to just make it mainstream like right now mutual funds sips are mainstream right as an investment product uh, stocks are mainstream as an investment product crypto is not so through on finance correct. we also trying to do that very nice also uh, a few tips for uh, folks who want to start up in the fintech industry yeah yeah so i would say if you if you want to start up in the fintech industry primarily i think you should start get start being active on linkedin and approach mm. your let's say idols or people who are prominent in the fintech space it could be anyone right. let's say it could be a vp of jp morgan to let's say a product guy in a fi- in a fintech early stage startup but you definitely right. need a mentor right now if you feel really starting up you know if you are let's say a second time third time founder then you are aware of all the failures and mistakes you did and you won't repeat them but if you are starting right. up at least in fintech i would say definitely have some sort of mentor there because you won't be able to figure because fintech is very complicated you know there is lending payments there is consumer finance there is personal finance so it's like very disintegrated and you have to see what for what domain you are solving that in which mm. people can help you there you need connections there you need networking correct there. i would say definitely uh, first thing is you need you need a you need to find a mentor it, it could be any they could be anything like 2 3 4 years older than you probably 10 10 as well and after that i would say you need to have some sort of research on what exactly you're trying to do and if you are into starting into fintech space please make sure you are have you have done your proper due diligence and regulation on the regulation wala bit mm. sometimes i have seen a lot of apps who have come out you know they are facing regulation issues because they are operating of offering uh, you know like products uh, without any c approval or something like that correct so so yeah, yeah. regulations and finance important get a mentor get a fintech mentor these 
to when you are able to do, you will be able to figure out, you know, and definitely if, if you are starting up, let's say you're a product guy, right? And you don't have any fintech or finance knowledge. So I would say you are definitely in the frame of mind. You are definitely the right person for the job to start a fintech startup. But hmm. what what would happen is other than a CTO would require one more person in your team, which you can call a core, call a core founding member who has credibility in the finance domain. Because let's say if you're pitching a finance app to a, uh, to, uh, to an investor, right? Or if, or if you are, let's say if you are 40 years, 35 years old, it would make another sense because you have experience, but let's say for 25, 30, 22, 21, and then you are pitching that it would be like, hey, no one in finance is actually in their team. And they, have, they have made a finance product house that possible. It means they have put in their little veins and they have outs- only outsourced other people, hmm. towards, other finance I mean, people. So it's like uh, you have to have some sort of, you know, a credible, uh, you can say, uh, fintech folk in your team. Could be anything. It could it can come in as an advisor as well, or like let's say one percent, point five percent equity. So it's like so definitely. So these are the two things I I would recommend for anyone starting up in the fintech space. Right. Superb. Thank you so much, Anuj, for joining with me on this podcast. Is there anything else that you want to tell the audience? But I just wanted to say that uh, if you are really, you know, very aware about your personal finances and you want to improve your investing process, definitely get on our app, right? Look through it, and I'm always open to any of the suggestions that you have. How how I can improve the app and what values it it is giving to you. So yeah, that that's that's all I wanted to say. And a really great set of questions there, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anuj. And guys, this is your host, Sarang, signing off. I'll see you next week in another podcast. Bye-bye.